I'm Ryan Reyes. And I'm Dominic Angel. And I'm Rick Macias. And together we are... Un poquito más. So I brought you guys here today because I wanted to share a movie with you guys. I feel like uh, recently in the last few weeks, we've been talking a lot about art and obtainability and... Uh, stuff we went to the museum last week yeah and so i was like oh this would be a good time to talk about hanging with the homeboys so i just feel like a lot of the topics that are discussed in the movie are like dealt with in the movie portrayed we've been talking about a lot recently machismo toxic masculinity friendship uh racism and then just like art in general and so I was like, let's do something a little bit different this week instead of just palling around. Let's re- do a review. Yeah. So I chose Hanging with the Homeboys. So I have to be honest. I was like, I love this movie. And I was like, these guys are going to fucking love this movie. I and then we were, as soon as 15 minutes into it, the, they're like, yeah, I, you know, it's good. the acting's really bad, but <laughs> I could see how it could be a good movie at some point. But it's just, this writing. <laughs> I thought the writing was good. Because I want to know, like, in general, what did you guys think of the movie? Uh, bad. What? You didn't like it? I mean, I enjoyed it, but it's bad. It's not a good m- <laughs> It's It's what I would... Co- well, I mean, it's a 90s movie, so it's hard to worry. Because there's, there's those kinds of movies that, that, I, that are made nowadays that I call monster truck movies, because you're not going to them because they're good or intellectual. You're going to them because they're fun. What did you think of the movie, Ricky? I thought it was fine. I I did like understand like some of the main story points. Like that conversation that's happening, I do like and get. It's just, you know, sometimes like the acting is like kind of missing its mark and then the pacing of the story is like not bad. It is a it is a short movie, but some of the pacing is like It definitely feels longer than it is. I didn't think so. I thought I didn't think so either. I didn't think yeah. I didn't think that part. I thought we were there for like two hours. It's less than ninety minutes. So a little bit of backstory <laughs> about this movie for the people that don't know: Hanging with the Homeboys is made in ninety-one by New Line Cinema. It's directed, written, and directed by a man named Joseph Vasquez, uh-huh. who at the time was kind of like he was an up-and-comer. Like this movie was kind of going to be his breakout role, but he. I was reading up a little bit about him and, you know, he passed away shortly after. Um, I don't know if he could, he, the report that I read said that he died from AIDS. Damn. Um, He was a guy that grew up in the foster care system. I believe Uh, his parents were drug addicts. I think (laughs) I'm pretty sure he had substance issues. Um, And like, he's one of those stories where he has like so much potential, but he also is kind of, problematic in his own right like oh yeah he was like an abusive person like the stories were that he was super hard to work with on set which oh, could really? have something to do with like aids <laughs> <laughs> yeah with the you know bad acting people just going through the motions oh, yeah. that's, that's which that's you know, i'm trying to defend sense. i'm trying to find any excuse to defend this movie i can't but um, no, he was like, you know, he's he's Afro-Latino. I think he's Puerto Rican, uh, Afro-Latino. And he had another movie that I don't remember the name of that he starred in. Um, but he only did two movies. The oh, really? starred in it? Yeah. Um, it was like Bronx. It was in Bronx Tale or something like that. Yeah, I remember seeing this movie when I was like, I don't know. I would think I was in high school and it was just like on HBO or something. And I saw John Leguizamo was in it. So I was like, I'm going to watch this because I like John Leguizamo. And what's so funny is that his acting is really campy in this movie. Yeah. But like, Josh, what did you say? Yeah, I said that everyone else's acting is so bad that he's John Leguizamo's acting circles around everyone. Yeah. Even though he's not... It's not that good. It's not as strong. But I feel like, so I would like to see where this is in everybody's timeline because I feel like it's a lot of. War? Yeah, I think so. But I feel like this movie is like, uh, this is an early movie for a lot of their careers. Dougie Doug's in it, Nestor Serrano, uh, Mario Lucas, Mario Joyner. That's his name. Mm, Yes, that is his name. Mario Joyner, 
But yeah, I remember just liking it in high school. And I think I just liked it because it was a John Leguizamo movie from the yeah. 90s. And then I rewatched it in quarantine. And I was like, oh, shit, they're actually talking about stuff in this movie. Yeah, yeah. And so I think I just enjoyed it for that reason because I don't think... There's not a lot of movies that had, you know, all mainly people of color talking about fucking, uh, like masculinity and male showing male friendships in a very vulnerable Yeah, that's way. also true. Yeah, because uh, I, I remember I said it out loud, it sounds dumb, but I was like, hey, they're communicating. Yeah. Like they're having problems, but they're they're talking about it. Right. So yeah, it's just like it's a buddy movie, but it's like you know, I'd compare it to a movie like Friday. It's not necessarily on par. Yeah. I I, I actually made that comparison when I watched it because it takes place over one night. On yeah, Friday night. I even put it in the Discord. Like, these are the reasons why I like this movie. And then it was funny because I was watching it under a more critical lens this time around because I, like, uh, uh, suggested it to you guys. And I was like, oh, is this a good movie? Rewatching it, I feel like my thing is, that my thing is, like, I, we were talking about this earlier, and it's like, I kind of like the campiness of it. I like that um i like when movies don't feel real like i like them to feel like a movie like a little mm-hmm. bit a little bit fantastical i guess i, I get it that. you said that and my first thought was that scene when they crashed the car <laughs> <laughs> it's very movie-y. not that scene yeah it's very movie oh yeah and they yeah you could tell their uh their special effects team was not the best <laughs> no but also the movie also, had a five hundred and thirty thousand dollar budget. That though. makes sense. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So they made it this for next. They to did nothing. good. Yeah, yeah. So they, yeah, they probably all got paid like very scant. Yeah, I bet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think this debuted at Sundance. Here's this thing. So if you guys watch this movie, the acting is very campy. I don't think it's as campy as like something like La Bamba. I rewatched La Bamba recently, dude. That movie is cheese balls for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Like the acting in that is oh, way, way over the top. That's when I got to rewatch. Yeah. Yeah. It's still that that Isai, fun to rewatch. Isai Morales's uh, uh, acting in that movie is super good, but everybody else, like Lou Diamond Phillips, is like, Jesus Christ. But the problem is, I mean, we'll t- we, we can talk about that movie. The thing about the acting that I think, I have this theory that a lot of actors that were like black and brown couldn't get that many like roles on screen yeah and so they had majority like theater experience and so i think like when i watch a movie like this the reason why the acting doesn't really bother me is because i'm watching even the blocking like the way the 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 actors are set up i'm like Mm -hmm. this is a so in my head i'm like this is a play like that's how i'm consuming this is like movies like this movie is like reservoir dogs i'm like these are plays they're not like, really even the way they're hitting their marks they're yeah like, they're, they're almost dancing around each other like mm-hmm. dancing yeah. out of place and in place yeah Choreogra- the, choreographed yeah 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 even there was like one part where they go like check out the girl uh, tommy's girlfriend like the camera pushes in on john Leguizamo, and like you can see uh like Dougie, Dougie Doug is like looking at him, but he's like frozen in place. And then as the camera gets closer, he like moves out of the way of the camera mm. so he can make space for him. Yeah. Which is a very like, I mean, obviously there's no cameras on film or on uh, cameras on film. There's no cameras like in place, but that's like something but like that would, freeze frame thing that people do. But they would do that with lighting and freezing. Right. And yeah, yeah. 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 So I, I think it's like when I, like when I watch it, I'm like, I'm watching a play right now. And so I think th- I'm much more forgiving of the acting. Yeah, okay. Um, at least for me, it makes it more enjoyable. I think part of the thing is I just love, like, bullshitting about... And even if I like a movie, I love, like, sitting with friends and talking shit about a movie for even sure. when I like it. So it's like... I also don't want to give the impression that I hated it. It was just, like... It was fun to, like... Oh, this is kind of cheesy or a little, like, off. And I like making fun of that stuff sometimes. So the basis of the movie is that it's hanging with the homeboys. It's four guys. It's Friday night. They're going and they're having a guy's night in New York. Like they're going to go dancing or go to a club or, or whatever. I think that like even like we're the four of us like sitting and watching it. I was like, oh, this like I think as campy as it was, you do get the feeling of like, oh, this is four friends. These are how they would interact with each other. A lot of things that they would do are like 
these these are just what you used to do when you were young and just like bullshitting with your friends. Yeah. Yeah, you know, pivoting, trying to try to get everyone on the same page, like four friends and meeting all at the same time, getting funds together to have fun, and then dealing with things not going your way. It's like, I, f- I can feel that for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, and and also like the roles that they had, like they each had defined characters which we all were trying to be like which one would we be in the group because like so John Leguizamo plays a character named Johnny who's like kind of a soft boy sad guy like very sensitive and like he's to I would say he's like a quote unquote like a nice guy like like um as soon as you see him as soon as like the other characters walk up to him he's like I don't know I feel depressed guys I don't know if I want to go out and fucking <laughs> Uh, Vinny or Fernando, which we'll get into, he's like very, he's a wo- womanizer, ladies' man, like <laughs> playboy. What are you guys doing over here? Every time you talk about a character, every time you talk about a character, Ryan's like pointing his eyes and he marked you. He I'm marked you as them? Johnny, and then he's at the womanizer and he does it to me. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Dougie Doug plays uh, what was his name Willie, and Willie is like a very militant, pro-black, like white, white, like anti-white uh, uh, person who's like on welfare, is like broke, and all the rest of the guys have to like spot him. <laughs> 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 and then Tommy's the guy Mario Mario Joiner who's like I don't know what would you he's he's, he's a friend the, with the he's, car he's, he's just, the friend he's with the <laughs> car yeah <laughs> he's got the money he's got the car Josh, Josh. wants to be an actor serial monogamist <laughs> he's got I feel like he's probably the most put together but also yeah. I I think that the movie tries to make him seem that way like that he's like the the good one of the group and yeah. I didn't think that I think them you gotta look at it like Ninja Turtles <laughs> I'm here for it he is the the Leonardo he's the blue one mm-hmm. in that he well there's a, oh, I, I meant to elaborate so, so <laughs> <laughs> I like how every time you say something there's a period like this like you just stop you got to think about him like the Ninja Turtles. I was giving you a second to think about. It. No, just do say <laughs> this. No, is a there's this thing of like how the, every groups of four in any form of media, it's the same breakdown of like the the gentle one, the leader, the rogue, and the party guy, the angry one, the aggressive one. Yeah, Raphael. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't think any of sure. were really angry, but. Well, so angry could also be misconstrued as like the one that's like very confrontational and very like he pushes the group to do things even when they don't want. I would say that Vinny is definitely the Raphael of that group. Yeah. So what did you guys think in general? Like, that um, makes the Rastafari and the Master Splinter. Right? <laughs> yeah. The <laughs> Mister. Sure. Sure. That's what I was sure. going to. Okay. For first, we, I, we it's a hard movie to get into story wise because it's like. It goes from the beginning of the night to the end of the night, like to till morning, and like it's kind of like like a just a straight run of like these guys are just like trying to have a good night, and they keep being challenged, and they all have like their their id that they need to address. Yeah, and so like it's you know they each are challenged in that way of like facing up to something that they have to face up to, and whether or not they do, you know, is up to them. And you yeah. kind of see by the end of it, they kind of do feel like some of them, they're not all changed overnight. Like, no. Right. They're not like all hundred percent over. Well, arguably Vinny doesn't change. He, he gets up out of the alley floor and he dusts himself off and hits on that right. lady. Yeah. He's he's the one that learned the least out of everyone. Well, I think he learned the most early on, before the movie. Right, <laughs> because he's learned <laughs> everything he needed knows. to know. So why don't you talk about Vinny, Josh? Because you used to really like resonate with this guy. I mean, f- well, first of all, I wanted to say I think that the movie has a, like, it speaks against all of those, 
Like they make the guy who's like, oh, uh, uh, what's his the the poor dude? What's his name? Oh, Willie. Willie. They make him like he's he's a bum. They keep calling him a bum. The final speech in the movie, he was like. Basically, what I got from that was like the if you keep complaining about the white guy, like you needed to get your money up and stop complaining about the white guy. So he does throughout the whole movie. Whenever he's confronted with something, he's like he the famous line, "Oh, you're doing this because I'm black, right?" Like right. he says that like over. And that's over. one of his first lines in the movie. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like yeah, he says like three times in the first few minutes. Yeah, as soon as he gets introduced, he's at the welfare office and they're about to cut him off, and she, she's explaining. And then the funny, it's like the. The reveal is like he's like, oh, you're doing this because I'm black, right? And then they just flip the camera, yeah, and she's black. yeah, she's black. The 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 woman that's the caseworker, and uh, yeah, he's like, anytime he'll go on these like long preachy like rants about how the black man having to work for the white man and like how they're trying to keep him down and and all this stuff. And to me, I didn't really get the sense. I mean, it's not like anti. We we're they saying say woke. It numerous times. He's like, you're, you're. This is you're gonna be your future, a bum. If you just keep complaining and asking people for money, you're on welfare. Why are you complaining? You, but did you even do anything about it? But did the difference, even? the difference is, I don't think it's. I don't think that there's necessarily saying. He said, "You think the the white man's the only one hiring?" Right, but that's what I'm saying. Like, so, I don't. Th- I don't think that because again, like at the so the whole movie happens and then there's a title card at the end, a dedication from the director to all of his childhood friends. Right? He said it was like this movie is uh, dedicated to all of the homeboys that this that it was inspired by, and he gives a list of their names. And then at the end, he he says, "God bless you wherever you are." Which I was like, "Damn, that's fucking." We'll get to that point. That's wild, yeah. But but um, no, I don't think I think he's basing you know, Willie off of friends that he's had. And I think I've known people like this, that there's like these radical anarchists, like people that, that I think that they're not saying the director to me, it wasn't that, Hey, your beliefs are bad. It was that you're using this as an excuse, as a crutch to not take accountability for yourself. Yeah. Um, because because so throughout the movie he's just going on rants and people are kind of dismissing him not taking him serious and then there's little bits that he where he feels vindicated and I I mean you don't see it but like when they so they go they find themselves at a party that's like all Puerto Ricans Mm -hmm. it's like a house party right and so Willie's sitting there by himself fucking <laughs> going to town on that food plate. <laughs> he just Which they make it a joke, but but he's in a place where he's not invited and he's taking too much. Yeah. Yeah. He he he's just like yeah, he's just helping himself. And it's like a stack of it's like a crazy stack. And it yeah. It's like thirty dollars worth of meat. Yeah. So he has a crazy stack and so a bunch of guys like go up to him and then they they call him a black boy and they you know they and then they end up like, Damn it. kicking them all yeah. out. <laughs> Monty was on your side on this one. He was being, he was in the wrong. And then you guys went and called him a black boy. Yeah. You got to make it about race. But the thing <sighs> That's is, not what I was so he feel, well, I no, I just mean, jerks. <laughs> calling him, um, he, uh, feels vindicated in that, you know, mm-hmm. I think of like, see, I am right. I am yeah. out being out here being oppressed. You know, they kicked me out cause I was black, which he was genuinely upset and he had every right to be upset. But, like, John Leguizamo the whole time is, like, going to bat for Puerto Ricans and being, like, there's a lot of racial tension between... So yeah. If, I don't know if he had every right to be upset. He who? was... They were lying about being in his party. He lied three times to their faces when they asked him why he was there. I don't... I'm not... I bet I, you if he was, like, oh, man, we were just looking for a good time, dude, and we just ended up here. I bet you they would have been, like, ah. Oh. The thing is, is, like, was he... I mean, he was taking a bunch of meat, but he was a really... <laughs> He crashed the party. Do you also think that... Lied racistly. Do you think... Jose Mendez? No, Va- Va- uh, Just trying to make Vasquez. Yeah, yeah. It's the name of the director. But do you think they would have come up to him... I didn't even catch that. ...if he wasn't black? Or do you think he would have just assume? I don't know. I mean, I, my that's thing is, like, question. you go, yeah, you go to parties. Sometimes point. people bring people to parties. Yeah. Like, they came up to him very specifically. It's like, you... Don't belong here. I mean, they were racist. Yeah. They were racist. Yeah. But, but I respected the racism when it was very specific. 
Well, well he, like, oh, they'll oh you're not black. You're Dominican. Now Get you got to go. <laughs> Grab his, his throat. I thought that was kind of crazy. But yeah, so he so he says that the whole time, like the whole, throughout the whole movie, he just like goes on these things about like being being held down yeah. by the white man and, and being oppressed because of racism. And I think that the real message and all of that was like, hey, dude, you got to get your shit to get like you have to hold yourself accountable 100%. and stop using this as an excuse. Not because so at one point in the movie, we're jumping back and forth. But at one point in the movie, after they've gotten like turned down from a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff has gone wrong in the movie. They lose the car and they end up at a at a diner and uh, they meet these two girls who are like these like college women that like kind of serve as like a uh, 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 story device of like hey was more mostly for Johnny but like they're used to call out like these dumb ideas that they have about mm-hmm. like their like the, their place in the world like really they're challenging where they feel stuck and yeah yeah and maybe like a little bit of uh, Johnny's potential. Yeah. Because you know I mean? she's like a college kid. She's toured the world. She's like, you could take she's, a bite. The world's waiting for you to take a bite out of me. Yeah. She's like, <laughs> she's a very worldly woman and like, <laughs> is going to teach him a thing or two. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, woman but, of mystery. But the her friend, who I think is named Lala. Yeah. Lala. yeah. Her, she's, Lala. A black wo- she's a black woman. She's a black woman who like, Willie goes up and talks to her and is just like, oh, you're hanging out with this white woman. Like you like must think you're better than than like you're a fraud and all this stuff. And, you know, Lala had a terrible night. First, that dude Vinny goes up to her and insults her. And then later, this other guy comes up to her and insults her from the same friend group. And, and then she leaves left. with and yeah. then she and then yeah, yeah. and then Luna leaves with Johnny. So leaves her there with. Yeah. You know, yeah. fucking hearts Poor out Lala. to Lala, dude. Yeah, she, she make a sequel from her point. She's of not the only one. <laughs> yeah. She's not the only one that needs new friends. <laughs> Completely <laughs> different movie, except for like five minutes. That would be interesting <laughs> to see because I res- this movie resonates with me a lot because it deals with like a lot of like male uh, uh, toxicity, toxicity insecurity. ideals, insecurities, stuff like it deals with like the male psyche, right? Um, and so a lot of this stuff resonates with me, but it would be interesting to see a movie like this done from the women's perspective. Because it's funny, even though it's like in media and in society, it's like women tend to serve as like uh, uh, um, they're, 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 the woman is the incentive to be a better man, right? And I kind of like that. So true. <laughs> but the th- what I was going to say is like, it's a trope. It's supposed to be a bad thing. It does. It's a trope and it doesn't really, well, the thing is that it doesn't give them an age agency and it's like, oh, you're just here to serve the man's story. Right. Uh, but to that point, like I've myself have been a fucking sad sap like John Leguizamo and like have met women that have their shit together and they're like, hey, you could do this too. You know, you, and you don't have to be a fucking loser. Like, like, you're hey. not a loser, you know. <laughs> they're like, hey, you're a man. It yeah. would be easier for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Actually, it would be much easier for you. And, then, and you were like, I have agency. I'm not listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a radical. She was like, I, I've never seen I'm you. my own character. <laughs> yeah. So I get that point. Uh, anytime, cause I've been a piece of shit before. Mm-hmm. The only time I've ever done better Still was are. because I was like, <laughs> gonna get these ladies. <laughs> yeah, that's the only time it Put matters. Sure. Yeah. That's the only time it matters to you to want to like be so I don't think be somebody. But I don't know. Is that negative? It's um it can be if that's the only if that's the only reason you keep changing your whole life, it's like good on you for at least changing, but it's also like do it for it's yourself. very conditional. I it's also there's that. a thing with it. I think for the woman who she's not, she's not there to serve him and make him feel better. Like she's just kind of like, trying to I, get laid. yeah, I mean, kind of she was, <laughs> Yeah, but she even said like, I don't want to marry you. Yeah. Yeah. So like, <sighs> I, th- I feel like she like, she's not, she's not there to like nurture him. She's not trying to nurture him. She's showing him 
she's just telling him like, Hey, things are better. Like could be better for you. Like you probably have a lot of potential. It's also weird that like, she's kind of like this mysterious woman that just shows up and then leaves. Like, yeah. And then there's the five, five, five slut thing. (laughs) Oh, so she gives him her phone number on a matchbook and the matchbook is from like a strip club or something. It says five, five, five slut, which are we not supposed to read into that? I mean, it's a common, honestly, statistically, it's a common way to pay for college. Oh right, That's she the, does say that she pulls sharks too. She's a pool shark. Uh, she, she's very she cool. Might have stripped. True, and it's so like army yeah. brat. She's an army brat. She basically, she's but it, that all could be. She's a real well-rounded person when is. you think about Actually, it. There's a lot of subtle detail there. But it's also like she, she's also that could also insinuate she's like I'm gonna do what I need to do to make my life better, mm-hmm. and all these this group of guys are just like ugh, like. Everything's hard. The white yeah. holding me down. White women holding me down. Yeah. Like, I like, broke my car. So I think my girl it's, it's, me. it is interesting because like Ryan said, like she does, she is a well-rounded character yeah. that we don't know a lot about. But the things that we do know is like that we find out about her is that she's has her stuff going on. And I think that's why like a lot of people might that watch it might be like rolling their eyes at her because she really is in there just to serve. And as far as the movie goes, she's there to serve Johnny's story. I for sure rolled my eyes at her character, but it wasn't because of all the cool stuff she did. Cause she was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. And she, did she have a leather jacket? She had a, like she a, a, what a are they called? I don't know. Trench? Not a. It wasn't I'm a trench. I'm in a leather jacket now. It was a. She was cool. I think it was everybody was dressed pretty cool in this movie. It was uh, a coat. It wasn't everyone. a jacket. It was a coat. You just a like you just like Tommy's <laughs> trench coat, the big no, black. I think, I didn't, I the giant Willie flannel trench cool coat. coat. Willie wasn't. No, he yeah, he's dressed a like people I know now. He has to, he has to dress <laughs> like a bum. I right? think yeah. that he can be cut out of this movie and put into a 2023 movie and fit right and perfect. That's how people are dressing nowadays. Dressing, but he would acting. look cool. But that, thing, yeah, that's people. That yeah. is what's cool now. But of. but to real quick to touch back on what I was talking about with Lala, um, is that she calls out Willie, yeah, right, and says like, "What have you done? Like, you're out here talking big talk, but have you done any demonstrations? Do you like sign any petitions? Have you even voted? Like, done the bare minimum to say all the stuff that you're saying." But you're really just like in a you're bird in a tree making noise essentially. Damn. Ooh. Someone told me that I'd be so like <laughs> hurt. Yeah, like, Damn, I really got to do some self reflecting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crazy. A sad a crow. Like. Noise. <laughs> so. <laughs> just real quick, that cool girl. She did do something not cool. She left her friend with these two strange dudes. She did that, do that. That's true. Yeah. That's not cool. She's selfish. Technically, she's like, she, she left can her handle alone. herself. And she in lied. a bar full of strangers. That's true. It was a nicer bar. There it was. A, it was a smoke. It was yeah, a pool house nice. for these smoke cigars. Yeah, I, I was just pointing that out. I will she's say not all she's cracked up to be. Damn, I thought it would have been. I <laughs> <laughs> was all the one saying she was cool. So I, I, I rec- to, you're trying to protect yourself. Hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Ryan, Ryan needs to say something. I need to reset. I'm sorry. Okay. So what we kind of profiled. Willie, we skipped over Vinny. Should we just profile it? I feel like it's easier to talk about this movie if we profile the characters. That's fair. I think because there's four stories happening, and even though it's one story, but they have like four arcs, and I feel like they each have their moments, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, what what did you guys think about Tommy? The guy with the car. Um, I think, I think he's probably the most ambitious one, but he was also, despite that, still a little delusional the whole movie. Like not a lot, but still delusional. Like clearly missing the signs that this chick is like mm-hmm. lying to him. That everything's going as smoothly as he wants it to be. So, yeah. So, okay. So real quick, just to give that context at the beginning of the movie, Willie, Willie doesn't have anybody. He just has his friends, right? Vinny wakes up and his, they, the first scene we see him in, he's in bed and he's next to his phone and his phone's off the hook. So like, as soon as he puts the phone back on, he starts getting these calls, right? So he's a, and it, 
every time he answers the phone, it's the same conversation with like different women. And then a woman, woman comes to, to visit him at his apartment. And the whole time he's, he's just giving them the runaround. Right. Yeah. And then Johnny, we see him at the supermarket and that, uh, what's her name? Vanessa. Mm-hmm. No, Vanessa is the, the girlfriend. I forgot her name. But but Johnny has has like a crush on this girl that goes apple to the chick. supermarket. Yeah, she touches the apples real weird first <laughs> scene. She's like, ooh. I mean, she's aged up. I was like, there's there got to be something about these apples, <laughs> like <laughs> because even the camera like just goes in on the apples first thing. Uh, she she liked them apples. Yeah, she liked them apples. How do you like them apples? <laughs> um, okay. But yeah, it's like this is woman that John is obviously pining for. That's like real nervous around and is like uh, trying to ask. I to his credit, even though it, Dar- Daria Daria well, Daria says he Daria, says Daria. Yeah, but it's Daria. Yeah, but it, but it's, he says Daria. Yeah, more so mm-hmm. even though even though he's he's not he's still like. Putting her, putting her on a pedestal, and not, and like he's kind of an incel. Yeah, yeah. But projecting. A, a projecting. That's the word I was looking for. He's projecting, and and uh, at the very least, he asks her out. I would say instead of just like. And she said next week. She was like, "Hey, let's she kind of yeah." She but also like, not I'm okay. <laughs> she was like, "You know what? I'm on heroin." <laughs> well, you think I think she was really sleepy. So that's so lazy. A, that's what she said. She, said, she was so feeling lazy. lazy. Uh, so she lazy. talks very like, oh yeah. Well, I that was something. Like that, that, that's something I wanted to speak towards. Was like heroin. There, there's, and Willie speaks on it later. But there are hints that that he's putting her on a pedestal that she's not really like. They don't frame her up. They don't. They look. She looks like someone who combs her hair, but it, it but it's like it's the hair from the night before. Yep. Like it's there's a lot of physical evidence that she's like not who she he thinks she is. It's in. He's deciding that that's who ah, she is, mm-hmm. and in reality, she's like some. You know, she's doing her own thing. She's like. It's revealed that she's kind of like a party person. She goes out all night. She does adult films. Not that that's related, but I mean, for the context of the film, it's like she's a, she's a completely different person than what he expects, yeah. but that's yeah. not her they, fault. They keep calling her virginal. He, he keeps calls calling her virginal. virginal. Which is a crazy they, thing to say. And I made so, up word. So he's pining for this girl, and then uh, Tommy is the only one that actually has a girlfriend. Yeah. And like, throughout the movie, he's kind of like, he's, kind of he's put together but he's not the most responsible like he drinks and drives uh and also like he you know he has a job he's trying to be an actor he's like hustling to like make something of himself he's in love with this girl and is like this is the one like he's he's the one that i feel like outside of uh outside of like chasing his dream to be an actor like he's the most like uh is looking for that like traditional like like home life domesticated home life um and then later on in the thing later on in the movie it gets revealed that she was cheating on him which is like he's kind of a blue like you're saying he's oblivious to a lot of stuff like, cause in the first scene, I mean, I know it's a movie and like actresses are made up, but it, that's interesting. Cause I didn't even pick up on that about Daria when like her hair is kind of messy and like, she's just kind of like tired. Um, she literally says it. I and know. Runs her hands <laughs> to her hair. She's like, I'm just so lazy. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. I'm autistic maybe. Um, but, <laughs> but like I said, as soon as we meet Vanessa, when the door opens and we meet Vanessa, she's like, oh no, I'm sick. I'm so sick. Don't I'm, kiss me. I'm, don't kiss me. I'm sick. Which. Big red flag. But the thing uh, that was interest that I pointed out immediately was like, or she has perfect makeup on right mm-hmm. now. Like, yeah. She has like a curled lock of hair. Yeah. Yeah. Her. Yeah. Like her hair is done. Yeah. Her hair is done. You know, she's not dressed like she's getting ready for bed. Liar. So he's also putting her on a pedestal, I guess. Yeah. Well, I think what was interesting with him was I don't think he had a journey of like learning more than it was just like comp- going back to, to the dumb, like Ninja Turtle metaphor. I think his thing was that he has to get out of the mindset that them as a group have to get out of the mindset of like they're uh, craving 
this like coping mechanism of like going out whenever yes. they can and like yes and it, it wasn't that anything held him back but he's the only one that deals with like kind of legitimate like real life consequence mm-hmm. that could happen to anyone regardless of how functional they are um and it is technically his fault but it's also a thing of like uh you know he gets in a car crash he calls a tow guy he has he just has to deal with that shit the next morning mm-hmm. yeah i mean he also was like i think his thing like you said is 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 um the lesson that he learns in the end i mean at the end of the night he's kind of like fuck you guys like i'm going to do my own thing uh, and like it's kind of like like not holding on to stuff like paying attention to the situation that you're in and doing what's best for yourself cuz exactly. cuz he could have he knew he shouldn't have been drinking and driving and he was, I was like gonna it's comment on that like it was much less condemned in those days like people drink and drive and then you get pulled over and cop be like you need to take a nap you need to go sleep pull over and go to sleep and then you like the, like it wasn't as I mean, now click it or ticket happened and yeah I mean or, maybe that's not click it or ticket. It's but the, the thing uh, is but the thing is buzz like, driving is drunk driving happened well well two things one Mom's like drunk driving he know you even if it was not like there's no laws or whatever like right. I think they know they know John <laughs> they knew almost snatched but the also beer out of his hand that was the other thing like he was actually confronted with it like hey you shouldn't drink and drive and, and they're like, like what's the worst what do you think is gonna happen yeah ah! it's a literal dead end <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it was so cartoony whoa. the way he screamed. Yeah, yeah, it really was. But um, That's so funny. But yeah, throughout, the, you know, he's 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 doing stuff. He's not paying attention to the signs, which literally, uh, he's not paying attention to the street signs. But also like the stuff Message. with his girlfriend, where symbolism. like there's no other real indication. I'm like hesitant to say that it's a sign, but like, you know, I don't want to sell the director short of being like, hey. Did you notice that she has perfect hair and makeup on right now? Like, no, that's for sure a sign. Um, she's like, I'm sick, I can't go out with you. Like, we made plans, but she's got all her makeup on and her hair's done. Yeah, you go, it was why also, is your makeup done? Yeah, I think for him, he was just like, Oh, cool, it works out. Then I can go hang out with the boys because yeah, that's yeah. what I came he over here like, to tell he has you. Her makeup's on, she's an eight, right, fellas? And that's what I was gonna say. That's another component of it. Is like, I don't think he really cared if she went out, she just. He, he was focused on the bet and he was distracted yeah. by it. So they make a bet when he, because t- he starts talking about Vanessa and how he's in love with her and Vinny's like, I bet you she's ugly. And like any guy who cared about his lady, he was putting on for her. He was like, no, she's a nine for show. I don't think that's caring about, so, like, I don't so think that's caring about your lady though. <laughs> so, but here's the thing oh, okay. is like the lesson, <laughs> the lesson I feel like, like that's the first time it comes up is that, uh, is that, Tommy has a lot of stuff going for himself, but he's also concerned with what his friends think about him. Yeah. Is it? They all want each other's validation yeah. more than fixing their shit. Which right. I think is very human. Yeah. yeah I'm not going to say, yeah, I'm not saying it's not, but I feel like that was his thing more than anything was like caring about what is, what other people think and like, like he, because he keeps talking about like, oh, I auditioned for a movie that was shot here. Like, yeah, you know, um, where if he could have just focused on like the things that were important to him, I think he wouldn't have been in a lot of situations. That <laughs> like slam into a wall. Yeah, yeah, driving into a wall. You know, um, but he's not focused. He's not focused on what he should be focused on. I feel like big facts. And and. Um, it is only one night, but yeah. I mean, we're talking about a story, a yeah, movie, yeah, like yeah, a I, whole I, I, like thing. Because he does have a learning lesson at the end of like he, he gives a speech to... Because so like <sighs> jumping around all over the place. Yeah. They, one, of the, one of the last times that all the friends are together, they're at like a fancy nightclub in Manhattan. And so uh, Vin, Vinny starts dancing with Tommy's girl that he's crazy, his crush, Daria. Johnny unknowingly. Fre- unknowingly and then and then Johnny freaks out they fight they leave fight in the alley Johnny knocks him out and then he goes home uh, <laughs> and then so to- later Tommy and 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 uh, Willie are, are in a, a diner uh, where this whole night they've specifically Tommy they've all been putting in and covering him but Tommy's been like all right I got you like I got like whenever they need to buy something buy dinner buy beer buy entry into the club or whatever like Tommy spots uh Willie and so at the end of it 
when they're at the at the end of the night, they're at the diner, and Willie's like, "Oh, are you gonna get me a sandwich?" And he's like, "No, I've been paying for you this whole night. Like, I can't keep doing that. Yeah. I have stuff that I need to take care of." Uh, and then Willie says some fucked up shit to him, which is crazy because he's like, "I'm, I'm," in in true incel fashion, <laughs> <laughs> right? Where like, uh, Tommy tells him like, "I have a job. I have." I have to fix my car. He's like, I'm an actor. I need to pay for my headshots. And Willie tells him like, Hey, you're not going to get anywhere. Like you might as well just sp- save that money and buy me an egg sandwich. And you're putting it nicely. He said, you have no acting talent. Well, yeah. He said, you have no talent as an actor, which is a wild thing to say. Damn. You're acting homeboy. It's like, yeah, I get it. When you're acting like the victim all the time, you think you're a good <laughs> <man>. <laughs> um, But yeah, he gives him this speech of like, I'm going to make it, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to work towards something. I'm going to be myself. And he's like, you, you're a user. You only hang out with me because you need money. And like, you don't believe in me. You don't support me. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to make something of myself. Right. Um, like that, he, his last sentiment is like, at least I'm doing something. Yeah. At yeah. least I'm doing something. And so he kind of cuts off. He decides then he's like cutting off the toxicity, which is a hard. Honestly, it's a hard moment. And I feel like that speech I mean, so Joseph Vasquez, the director, was not... He was a drug user. He was he had substance issues. Um, he's a, a person. Yeah, yeah. But I just mean, like, he's not being, like, holier than thou and saying, yeah. like, I'm better than you. But I think he might have even... He might... He either was told that by somebody or he had to do that yeah. for somebody else. That's what I think. I was like, this sounds like the person who made this movie talking being like, I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to be an actor. Yeah. I'm going to keep doing this no matter what. And I'm leaving all my friends behind. <laughs> well, that's in memory thing. of all my friends. Don't know where you guys are. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about the movie, because one thing, friendships, male friendships, adult friendships have been coming up. The conversation has been coming up more and more in my life. And the thing that I never paid attention to that I saw this time that we watched it, even though it's a fucking title card is the title card. Cause usually when credits start rolling, I'm like, all right, I'm out. But he dedicates this to a bunch of his friends and it says, God bless you wherever you are. So these are all people that were like super close in his life at one point that he probably grew up with. That he became close to as a young adult. And for one reason or the other, like they were cut out of their. And not just that, there was a bunch of names on the list uh-huh. more than there was the four people. Yeah. So I yeah. Think that they were probably hyper condensed. Yeah yeah. 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 Exactly. But that was the thing that I was like, that's a super hard thing to have to do do right to like because the whole time they're you know the guys are fighting a lot and like i said it reminded me of hanging out with friends especially friends that you have when you're younger where like i think at a certain point it happens for some of us not all of us but you start to question why am i hanging out with these yeah. people i've been there you like know. this movie was like really making me go <laughs> back in time at some points of like yeah. it wasn't this was way lighter than like in some situations, but it's like male friendships. Like it's weird. Cause I'll speak for myself, but it's almost like you didn't think you get to have standards or boundaries or like right. with male friends. You're just like, now we all, the whole goal of us hanging out is to have fun and your none of our feelings matter. Yeah. Like, yeah, the, it's all what, about having a good time to escape. Yeah. And like they were, they were using each other to escape from their problems. Which is interesting because, so throughout the movie, I think these conversations, because they have, they have the, every, throughout the movie, especially in the second half, like they all have these things where the, where each character is challenged by what their like it is, right? Like throughout it, they all have these tender moments with the, not tender, but like these no, like, they do, where they kind of are having real even though they're like communicating with each other, they're like, Hey, I'm trying to help you out. I care about you. You're my friend and Mm -hmm. I want you to be all right. But then they go real quick back back to right back into starting trouble and acting like fools and stuff. And kind of just like boys, just the boys, boys. (laughs) but that's, so I kind of wanted to tell this story where like, I think one thing that really hit me when I was watching this again and hearing that speech from Tommy was like, we had this friend in our friend group that when, when, when I was in my early twenties, it was me and my brother and a couple of, of other friends. Right. And we would hang out all the time and it happened 
regularly where one of us didn't have money or was out of a job of or something. And we kind of took turns being that person. Yep, yep. Yeah. And everybody else is like, no problem, I'll spot you, I'll spot you. But there was one friend who was always like broke, like mm-hmm. always didn't have money. It was always lacking. And really? yeah. Um, but we weren't like, <laughs> like how the movie bomb is. Me, fucking bomb me, yeah, we weren't calling him <laughs> yeah, a bum crazy. or anything. He also that wasn't was super preachy. They're also New Yorkers. But yeah, but like we were, we were always just like, yeah, not a big deal. Like, okay, we all, it's kind of was a thing that I think all of us were like, you, you, we would keep in mind whenever we were going out, like, okay, one of us is, we'll have to make sure we have enough to cover our friend kind of a thing. Like he would probably pitch in what he could, but we would like get the rest of it. Like it wouldn't matter. And then one day this fool, like, he was working hard behind the scenes and he got, he finally got his degree, uh, in like code, like something in computers. And then he got a job working for fucking something that was like MailChimp. Okay. And he moved to the Bay, got a good job. And it was like, Oh, it's sad that he's going, but then he got a good job. And then he ended up, uh, moving from there, getting even better job in Seattle and we all kind of just missed him but it was like damn that's cool like good for him like because he was always that guy right Mm -hmm. and then one day my friend had a christmas party which was crazy because the party was at his like his parents house but he wasn't there oh no it wasn't at his parents house i'm sorry it was at another friend's house but he we had this christmas party and it was like the old all the boys are back together right and then this friend comes like in the middle of the night and we're all just like talking, joking around like we usually do, like just whatever. Like it's just we're having fun. And the whole time that he was there, he kind of like. You could tell he wanted to leave, like he was uncomfortable. He kept like doing this. And like whenever somebody would answer a que- ask him a question, he'd be like, yep, yep, yeah, like very short with people. And it was just like, he just wanted to leave. And then you kind of start to question, you kind of start to question like what is, I don't know. It was just like a whole thing of like, what's your deal, bro? What's your deal? Why? I, I, nobody ever really confronted him. Cause I think everybody was just like excited to see him back. But we talked about it after and it was like, oh yeah, he was acting weird. Right. Like we, we all saw that when we were all joking and stuff, we were just like talking shit, you know, like not really talking about anything seriously. We were, we were ragging on each other, talking, like talking shit, just like catching. And we were trying to catch up and with, with him. And he was just like, yeah, I do this thing. Da, da, da. Um, he was telling us about his job, his new job. And like, and that was kind of it. And then it was like, Oh, that's weird. And then he kind of just stopped talking to everybody. And, uh, well, there was a reason for it. There's two reasons, but after that, uh, another friend of ours told me this story, which kind of put everything into context. And, um, so these two guys were talking, I'm trying to keep everybody's name a secret. So we'll just say like, David is the guy that moved that just for whatever, just so I could give somebody a name. So essentially my friend was telling me that he was hanging out in his garage with David and David just like randomly brought up like, like, yeah, you know, don't, don't you think it's time? Like we, like we should like at some point, at some point, like we should like move on and like have new friends. Like, and like my friend telling me the story was like, no, what are you talking about? Like we're, we're best friends. Like we're, we're all in a group. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, but don't you think like, like we should like do better in life, like be, be become better, essentially like move on, move on and like go to school, get a good job and like have like new, new friendships and, and experience new people. And, uh, well, so the thing for me, the thing for me that resonated with me was like one in the movie you got to remember that this guy, David was like, he was always, always broke. Mm -hmm. And like, and 
Mm. There was like hints that he was trying to like meet new people and do like he was part of a meetup group that we didn't really take seriously. Um, but he was part of this meetup group and their whole thing, like it was like he met these people online, like a part of a forum of some sort. Okay. And he like there, it was like a hang. It was a, it was a hangout for people specifically that didn't have a lot of money. So like they would specifically go to things that were on discount, like, like it was just like, it was a hangout for people that didn't have a lot of money, okay. which now saying that now I'm like, Oh, he was embarrassed. And then maybe even coming back to that makes him feel that way. That's what I was kind of trying, trying to get at. Like it's reminding him of being in that. Position. Yeah. And, and I think, well, the thing is, is like when we found out about it, we were like, I'm going to be honest. Like it was three, it was three of our friends that went with him to this thing. And we were joking around the whole time. And we were kind of acting like these fools when like the, they're embarrassing Johnny, like by causing a scene in the pool hall. Yeah, like, yeah. like we're, we were kind of being obnoxious, having but fun. it was, we we're having fun, but it was also a, a thing like we're <laughs> real friends. Like I you guys are the others. Like yeah. we're the, we're the real friends. And I remember during that thing, like, they like one of them they they bought like the cheapest things on the menu and the 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 one of the people in the group was bought like a kid's meal they asked if they could buy like because it was at norm so they were like can we can i get a kid's portion da 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 and i remember i just ordered whatever i didn't order anything like, like extravagant but you're messing up the vibe but that was the thing is Two like steaks, please but she <laughs> 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 and throw one of them away yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but one of the people in the group was like oh this is for people like we don't spend a lot like like there was the thing of like oh you can't spend money you're not supposed well, to the whole point is not to feel like shame because you and can't. i didn't pick up on that yeah. i was just okay. like oh but i can so i'm gonna buy this yeah it, it's it's I, not a big deal. I probably would have accidentally done the same thing. No, I did that. And I didn't, yeah. I didn't, it, it didn't cross my mind that like, oh, the whole point is that, yeah, you don't embarrass anybody. Like, so it's, it's might sound like a silly rule to have I, for this. I, thing. I understand it, I think, but I definitely don't like it. I, I mean, think also, also yeah, it doesn't have to be for you. I yeah. think it's, I think it's, while like their whole thing is not trying to m make each other feel bad, so they made you feel bad. The, uh, mm. Why I'm like, what? I don't. You guys are hating on me. But you got to remember that I'm this. coming into their space. That's I guess. I'm yeah, coming yeah. into their space. It's, so, like, it's it would fine. Be cool if you would have sat at a table across from them or something, and got to eat your steak. No, that's still weird because you're still like trying to be adjacent. Just go yeah. somewhere else at that point. Like, it's something that I don't think I would have registered. I didn't have the sensitivity like for it. Because like, the thing is, like I said... like That was the point of the group. <laughs> yeah, I guess. You're that right, was you're right, it, right. When it's the point of the I'm group, about this one, I, I get it. Yeah. And and it did feel like that. Like And looking back on it, it is like, it was a rude thing to do. Like... It's 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 a faux pas at the at at least like at least saying like it's a faux pas like these people they have a thing and they set it up for themselves and it's a community probably that they're but they part probably of. had to establish some new rules because of that yeah they're like hey you no know like when, you know yeah you know like when you you ask to invite somebody like are they cool but in this group you're like are they broke like are they really well broke? I think that was the thing too is that they had to, they approved us yeah. Like so they had to, we enough. had to ask, no, like, they, we had to ask permission, which makes sense too. It's like, Hey, can I invite my friends? Yeah. You know, they, he had to ask permission and we kind of embarrassed him, you know, but it was like, but the, my whole point is like bringing that story up was like, Oh, he was trying to meet other people. Yeah. Like he was trying to like be comfortable and like, yeah. there was all of these like little signs and then all of a sudden, so he kind of made so in my head, he's, he's kind of like the Tommy and like they, uh, Willie and, uh, uh, so there's two, two characters, Tommy and Johnny both kind of like move on and learn something. And I mean, Willie's challenged and you, we don't really get to see him act like whether or not he's learned something, but him and Vinny both say something that I think we all felt when like David left which was like, you're a piece of shit just like the rest of us. We were all kind of like, oh, David's supposed to be the guy. Like, th I think that's another reason why we were all cool with like yeah. pitching in for him because it's like, oh, he's the one that 
is broke. Yeah. You know, and then when he started doing better for himself, it's like, oh, wait, but you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to do that. Yeah. Like, we're supposed to do that. Yeah. We're supposed to, like, have jobs and move on. And then he ended up getting a degree and getting a way better job than any of us could yeah, get. Yeah, yeah. And, like, doing much better, you know, financially, at least, than, than any of us. And, like... I think it's also, like, in that moment, I think that's all fair and it's uncomfortable. But it's also, like... He's like, but I did the thing and no one's treating me any different. Imagine like doing all that and you're like, and everybody's like, Hey broke guy. Like they're still treating you with the same energy, even if they're not saying it of like, Hey broke boy. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least for me, this is going too far into like yeah. my personal instead of this movie. Yeah. But like for me, I think to kind of bring it back to the movie is like, there was a lot of communication that was going on in this. Yeah. movie, And I think these are conversations that like, the director wanted to have that he wished he would have had with his yeah. friends or something that didn't happen. Probably so. You know. It does feel that way. Um, that's why it's a little heavy handed yeah, at it, times. It, I mean, it's also from 91 too. Yeah. So it had to hit, it was for, it was for people of color. Yeah. 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 But and it's heavy handed, but it's like, I said it out loud, like they're communicating like, what movie shows guys communicating like that? Yeah. Yeah, when so a big part for me to go to Ocean's Eleven. Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> yeah, but they got a job. They work together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but like the big scene for me was the the talk between Willie and Johnny after the car crash cuz Johnny in the first scene he's in, he's pining for Daria, Daria when they're in the supermarket and like after the supermarket because because when we meet Tommy at Tommy's apartment he's talking about how he loves Vanessa and she's the one and then Johnny's like oh I got a girl too I'm crazy about her mm. you know she's so innocent and virginal mm-hmm. which virginal doesn't even it's sound a real like a word, word. I it is it up right okay now. It's you look usually at referencing well, it's mostly used in vampires Vampires preying on That's young, why it was so young funny. women. Yeah. <laughs> he does. And it's kind of, yeah. He's, That's how you fight. He does make a lot of crazy faces at women. In th- yeah, the whole he movie. really does. Yeah. <laughs> There's a scene when, when, when they, going back to when they were, they made a bet about how attractive Tommy's girlfriend is. Uh, he says he doesn't get a good look at her. So they make her come out again. And he, and Tommy's trying to talk to her to distract her. And he's just going. Also, they're like pushing right the at her. Yeah, yeah. Like they're, they're zooming like in on him. Yeah. Um, but he's telling Tommy how he's crazy about this girl who's like innocent. And vir- he keeps saying she's innocent and virginal. Maybe. And then they go, they end up at the peep show and uh, it's revealed that his his crush is... She's not as, as virginal. <laughs> she's not as virginal as, as uh, they would like to believe. She's in the movie and like he freaks out and like... Uh, he's like freaking out about it. Not he's he's distraught, right? He's yeah. he's he. Well, his world just got wrecked. Like, yeah, his, his world. Rea- the reality he painted in his mind is being exactly shattered. So twenty five cents shattered its twenty five cents. <laughs> it was, and he paid for it too. Yeah. <laughs> um, but 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 he after the, they get into a car crash, right before he gets into a car crash is is he's still freaking out about it. And then the car crash happens and he like walks away from everybody. And then Willie, it's funny that Willie is the one that's like consoling him in that moment. She's also in the hood still. Like she's not making no money. No, no. 25 cents. She probably, it's probably, she got drugs. That's probably all she got. It it seems like heavily implied that she's like a night person. Like she likes to go. I mean, she was at the expensive Manhattan nightclub. But she probably for free. She's yeah. She's. I mean, this this is all a lot of speculation. Okay, this is a lot of speculation of her character. Paid like a hard. It doesn't. We just keep going on it. It doesn't matter. She paid in court. Listen, (laughs) the whole point is, Willie has that conversation with Johnny, and. It's interesting that it comes from Willie to be this one, the guy that like asked him like what happened, and he's like that the girl that I'm crazy about that's the one that was in the movie, and he goes he doubles down the innocent and virginal one that you've been talking about for weeks. <laughs> Can uh, you charge a dollar? That's what he said. Well, that was that was later in the that was Vinny says that. Oh, I thought you said Vinny. 
You no, Willie. Willie. Yeah, yeah, oh, Willie. That's my but problem. um, too many rhyming names. But uh, but he, but the thing that is interesting is that Willie challenges him on his like thought process, like his projecting, where he says like, right. "How did you? Did she say she was virginal? Yeah, what? But he says what? Well, no, he says how? What made you think?" She was innocent and virginal. And he says, well, just the way she was acting. You know, I thought she was different. Like, I thought she was this kind of a person. And then he says, did she say she was innocent and virginal? And then Johnny responds like, no, who talks like that? Who comes up and will just tell you something like that? And Willie's like, exactly. (laughs) You fucking idiot. Yeah. (laughs) He's like, no, it's like, yeah, like you... He he tells him something that's really big where he says, you can't blame her for your own thoughts. Yeah. Like, you're getting mad at her Imagine for being this... Imagine the womanizer defending women. <laughs> <laughs> well, Willie's not... Oh, that's well, He sorry. was one I of the was ones... For a second. Every time they were, like, catcalling, he was one of the ones, like, out the window yelling. I'm well, not... I'm still loving I'm, the ladies. I'm not defending that behavior of catcalling women, like, hooting and hollering at women, but I think... Underage women, too. They also uh, got out of the car. And well, we don't. I mean, it's, well, that dude was thirty six. Well, the dad. The guy, the, oh, the dad. The dad that oh, comes out. Oh, oh, right. You're talking to 36? my daughter. Thirty six. I don't think. Yeah. No, I don't know. He had to he, be at least like in his late twenties. Because that, guy that had an arm. arm. Yeah, that arm one. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, thirty six year old throwing like that. Oh, that's your bath. Uh-huh. <laughs> but but so so anyway, like he Willie tells Johnny like you, he says you you're getting mad at her for something that. You painted in your own head, mm-hmm. and you can't blame her for your own thoughts. Big facts. Yeah. Which is something really interesting. So, like, well, touching on what you said about him, like hooting and hollering, I I'm not defending him, but I don't think he's doing it. He's doing it because it's a dumb guy, like fun thing to do. Um, oh right, the like him yelling at the window because all he's really doing is like barking and like. Like, that's how they bond. It's not even <laughs> the intention of actually following through with anything. That's yeah, a big thing. Vinny's a lot more creepy about it. He like got out of the car. He told him. Well, they all got out of the car. Well, they all got out. No, of I the mean car. like he opened the door and he was like, "Slow down." Oh yeah. yeah, yeah oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I mean I not it it's, definitely is reckless creepy. and is that's this for sure for sure absolutely. But I just mean like I think he's just like oh this is just like guys having fun party night and party 90s. night like he doesn't care who the girls are like we're just gonna yeah, yeah we'll, super condom <laughs> oh. that was supposed to be. yeah so <laughs> not Silix and nine so yeah the, it's a it's a real interesting moment when like each of them are able to challenge each other on those like thoughts. My favorite moment was his moment <laughs> when they're at the subway and they get. Randomly kidnapped by the cops. That's the thing. So we keep calling Vinny Vinny, but his real <laughs> name is Fernando. 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 But this was during a time when, like, this was apparently a thing, and during like the eighties and nineties, where like people that were Latino would pretend that they were Spanish or Italian or something. Like they the didn't. Italians want- were killing it. I just love like how intense that policeman got. He's like, "Why do they call you Vinny if your name is Fernando?" Why isn't it furball or funny? And he's like, I don't know. It's just a nickname. No, I asked a question. <laughs> yeah. Why is your nickname Vinny? The cop was a little bit over the top, but I also do think I'm Italian. I, th- you think I mean, you're they're Italian. Driving, I think they're driving the racism home for sure. But I for also sure. think, like, uh, you know, the the, the, the so the cop didn't do anything racist. Are you sure that whole scene? What he's just this? trying to prim- he's well, just trying to humiliate to... him. Sure, well, put him in his not place. Italian. What? He's not Italian though. Yeah, but who what But the energy behind it of like Well, he tells to... him you're scum like you're never you'll never be anything. Cuz they're criminals. Cuz they st- stole at the trip. No. The- it's it's an allegory for racism. The 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 degree but and reaction the to that guys punishment, or the other Latino guy, because they're not pretending to because be. Because one of them was pretending to be white. Because he doesn't have to put them in their place, he has to put the guy that thinks he can get out of his place back in place. Okay. Yeah. Also, okay. like he very, it was very clear that he had like. Okay. Tommy was very afraid. The other guys were being respectful. When someone's acting like uh, a race other than theirs, and you call them out on it, it's racist. I no, didn't, no, no, oh, no. That's, that's not what, what was happening. The he's trying to humiliate him. Yes, right. Where's and the, he calls him scum. 
we're saying the the subtext is the reason he's going at it is because of racism. Whereas like you could just fucking arrest him or give him a ticket and move on. True. That vitriol and that energy of like trying to humiliate this guy for trying to get out of line or whatever, like that's the racism of all of it. Like, and it was also the thing I feel like Dominic was going to allude to this. Um, it was it was also a move of like. Vinny was the one making jokes and like teasing Tommy and he was like not taking it serious exactly and the policeman was like let's scare this kid not necessarily scare him but it was more of a thing of like uh, asserting his authority but there's this there's this subtext of like he's not asserting his authority as a policeman he's asserting his authority as like the white man in that scenario okay Okay. yeah I think so he, he says I'm Italian so it was so funny too because he like had a mildly New York accent and yeah. then he's like, You think you're Italian? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Suddenly like the heaviest you soprano see this name accent. That you can't read. <laughs> yeah, Baba Ganoush. <laughs> yeah, and also I'm pretty sure he was Irish or something. Yeah. Like, even that if that cop was racist, right? Uh which he is, you guys are I'm in the minority <laughs> here. Um he, he, even if he was racist, which he was for the context of the film. He, they did break a rule. They were in trouble. And if they wouldn't have stolen that thing, that cop wouldn't have messed with them at all. And they had I the mean, money to, to pay for it. They I, just did it for fun. I feel like the movie kind of made it a little bit heavy-handed, but it it was because that was supposed to be the point. It was like a thing of like, not that they wouldn't have gotten, or that they would have gotten away if they were white, but I think it was supposed to seem overly ridiculous to employ a point. Like, it's it's a metaphor. Like, they jump over, and it's teasing, and everyone's having fun, and literally out of nowhere, these cops show up and pull them into a dark room. For sure. And so it was like, it was meant to be, it's dramatic on purpose. It's over the top on purpose. It's very theatrical. I get that. The whole movie's like that. Yeah, I, well, that's actually that crash scene. I can't get yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, the crash scene's ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think there's a lot of like a lot more than the more we talk about. It, there's a lot more to that to the movie about like male friendship and uh, that it's an es- a lot of times it can be an escape from reality and accountability and growth. And it's like it's interesting because it's like these are things I've never like. Uh, immediately we all kind of had feelings about this mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like yeah it's targeted at us but that doesn't mean it's gonna hit and it's like there's a lot there and there's a lot of things where like we we've all probably been on either side of that with f- different friendships yeah. of like being the guy that isn't doing enough about with their life and being the victim and then also trying to help someone that refuses to grow or change and it's like i've been on both sides of it yeah i think so i think i think the character about willie right uh, all of it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, like, they're challenging Vinny a lot. Johnny's challenging Vinny a lot about him, like, mistreating women and, like, mm-hmm. and being kind of just, in general, being an asshole and, like, r- r- making fun of everybody. Which I think there's something about, like, roasting your friends or whatever, mm-hmm. but he was just, like, out of pocket a lot more than the rest of them, just, like, Johnny? saying shit. Vinny, Fernando. Okay, okay. Uh, I have, I'm, a, I have a, I have a little bit of, not sympathy, but like, I think that Vinny was the most real character out of all of them. He was more. Uh, oh, I see. You, you like saying he was the more person. honest person, even if honest, he was a flawed person. For sure. I mean, yeah. he used his hands a lot. He looked like a magician. Like he was trying to distract you while he stole your watch. I, mean, he was, I think that was to add to his trying to be Italian thing, right? Yeah, he's, he's he did do this a lot. Like an Italian Latinos do talk with their hands a lot, don't they? I don't know. Yeah, yeah but but um, it's I, yeah. he says a few things that I'm like. Yeah, but just because he's like an honest character doesn't mean like oh yeah hey let's fucking lie to a bunch of women and like right and use them for their money. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yes. I don't, I don't have. I don't have much. I find out that, that many friends. What like, I feel is like, like, like. Do you, you guys think it's wrong for someone to be a gold digger? No, I think it's wrong when you trick people while you're a gold digger. There's gold it's diggers like, that like half the deal though. No, it's not. There's gold diggers and people that make these transactions, <sighs> these relationship transactions, where everyone knows what's going on. 
because they both know what this exchange is and yeah. the facade is part of the game with okay. each other okay. they made an agreement whereas yeah. the any gold digger regardless of gender that's tricking someone into giving them their resources that's wrong that's just wrong okay because you can actually find people that are willing to do that like honestly you're right yeah you're right i guess i guess i don't know maybe i'm like a little more like street in that yeah in my brain where i'm like this is the game dog. some people some, girls, some, some people, people do that to survive yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what yeah. I, and and I, that's kind of, that's kind of where I was thinking about it. like this is just another hustle. Yeah. Like th- that's the same way I look at the drug dealer, the coolest guy in the movie, Louis Louis <laughs> Louis Louis dude. He was like oh Manhattan Inn. I don't remember what he called it. He called it something. Maddie awesome. Hattie. Maddie Hattie. Yeah. Maddie oh, Hattie. God, he was so. Nothing's tight. happening in Bro- Boogie oh. Bronx. Exactly. That fool was tight. I, but I get what you're saying because yeah. this is all survival. 100%. Well, it's like you Selling said. Drugs. It's like you said in the scene where Willie's talking to Johnny after the car accident, and uh, Vinny enters frame, and he's like, "Have you ever thought somebody?" Johnny's saying, "Have you ever thought somebody was better than the rest?" And it turns out that they're worse than everybody else. Okay. And uh, we'll get into my Vinny, my Vinny defense. And and Willie goes, "What do you mean, Fernando?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and Vinny's, Vinny's defense, like Vinny's response to that is, hey, man, it's Vinny. Like he doesn't he deny. He heard everything they said. He knows that he's acting this way. That, and I guess that's maybe why I like have a little bit more respect for him. Uh-huh. Because like like he says in that scene in the bar, he's like, you think I've always been this way? He's like, no, I've gotten hurt. Like that's why I'm saying we're, we're looking at a man hurt. Yeah, but he's still the dishonest. He's still so, di- he's honest to shady. his friends. To his right. friends, yeah. But he's dishonest with Damn. everybody else, else. That, he's, that he's like. And well, and I the, mean, what's he owe? What's he owe any of those people? What he doesn't. Uh, what, he, uh, people are dishonest, buds. No, for sure. Uh, people suck. He's just doing the same thing that happened to him, though. Hundred like, percent. Yeah, hundred percent. He's which just, is like he's really thing. trying if, to protect. If his, that's even what happened, he's fragile. To him. See, yeah. but that's the other thing. We never see him <laughs> smash a chick. <laughs> I shouldn't say it like that. We never see him have sex with a, a, a person. Right. Is that we better? don't see anybody have sex except yeah. for that flat ass guy. <laughs> oh, the, uh, the porno man. Yeah. Porn. Yeah, yeah, man <laughs> ass. Um, yeah, he never actually acts on any of his impulses. Even when they get out of the car to chase those girls down, they immediately oh. forget about it. And he just starts hitting on random women again. Oh, he's done it. he did his best, though. <laughs> he tried <laughs> he his was, best. He, I, I, <laughs> He immediately shifted his focus to finding the party and not being like, we got to find those girls, though. Uh, you know, he's I like, think there's music. My opinion on Vinny, Fernando. And then he lied about being Jose or Jose sending him, which is, look, he's a liar. <laughs> but he but lies at least he's honest he about wants. it. I feel like we're going to open yeah. this. I feel like we're going to open this mini fridge and there's going to be a ton of casseroles in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Sh- that would be sick. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I legit um, had a coworker like that guy. It, it, for reference, that's how they show that he's dating a lot of women at the same time. Is he opens his fridge and it's just which, full of casseroles. Because a woman comes and brings him dinner. Like, yeah. so, so what's the issue with this? Is dating around? Do you guys think he should be? But it's not dating around. It's being dis- he's it, not dating around. He has all of these women believing that they're the only one. Well, what was really funny is we were watching the movie together and then uh, Vinny does his speech that was like, I've been hurt before. Every mm-hmm. time I would fall over, head over heels with a woman and I would get hurt. And then I go... He only, it was only two women. And, jo- and uh, Josh goes, that's all it takes. <laughs> <laughs> it's big facts. It's big facts. I mean, the thing, but the, but the whole thing about that is that like, hey, yeah, I'm sorry you were hurt by people, but that doesn't mean you get to go and enact that on other people. Like, he's been a lot, he's, we don't know that all of these women are hurting, but it's, what the, happens as soon as our boy, the actor whose name I forget right now, Tommy, Tommy, as soon as Tom, Tommy, Johnny, Vinny, and Timmy, Willie, <laughs> and Willie, <laughs> Jesus Christ, you guys Tommy. weren't paying attention to this. All right, fucking anyway, Willie. Johnny, uh, sorry, Vinny and Willie. <laughs> they, he thought of all those names like at once. Um, sorry, uh, oh, uh, Tommy, the actor, yeah, the actor. Okay, when he gets it, when he finds out his. Vanessa, his girlfriend, is cheating on him. Uh huh. They go to the bar. He has a couple of drinks, and then he makes the decision. He's like, "I want to get pussy." Yeah. Right. So I'm like, I'm like, that's what happens to most dudes, I guess. I, I guess you guys are. No, I'm listening to you. Though. No, we're oh, listening no, I'm to saying you. like, 
a dude gets his heart ripped out and he's like, fuck, fuck everything. It only took one, Vanessa. Yeah, well, he's like, <laughs> he's like in the moment of it, though. Like, that's, that's like, I mean, he's up. grieving a but fucking I mean, that's what that that heartbreak. That's I'm part saying, of like, that's what that turns into. He's yeah, like, I could to use the when the you don't deal him. with grief and emotions in a healthy way. Because that's their whole friend group. They don't know how to cope with any of it. That's why they're hanging out on a Friday night with when they are all broke. Well, not all of well, them. Well, they're not all broke. Johnny and... Johnny and Vinny. And Tommy I mean, have money. Yeah, well, but it's implied... Money. Like, <laughs> Vinny's got all these girls. They still worry about money. money. You know what I mean? They're like from yeah, the Bronx. It's implied. You You're know reading a saying. little bit too much into it. No, I'm saying like they didn't have to go out. They didn't have to, but, you know, I hanging out with agree. friends. Vinny is trash. Vinny is trash for lying. I said that while we were watching it. Right. Like, <laughs> As a, he was I like, wanna, Vinny's my man. And then when he was like, he, oh, he lies. He I was lies. like, God damn it, he lies. Like, I, I do wish he wouldn't lie and he would just be honest. If he didn't lie that and he would have told the girl at the beginning, like, I'm, I made plans with the guys. I got to go. Maybe I could give him a little bit more leeway. That's what I said. He's a piece of shit. Because like, not, if he was just honest, he's is. more of a gigolo than an asshole. Because also, <laughs> also when he meets, I don't, I don't, when throughout the, he keeps getting rejected, and it's like, well, you because you said something that was like, well, he has women, like they're, it's worse, like he's got to be doing something right or something like. Well, well, you didn't I mean, say like, that. Would no, you, yeah, because you were saying it's a numbers game. Uh, well, cause yeah, because he's he's, uh, he's getting turned down the entire movie, but his fridge is filled with those casseroles. Right. Unless that girl comes over every day. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then it's like, not eating you're, you're not eating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when, as soon as he meets 51st dates. Daria, she's like, I'm into it. Like, she's automatically like, no question. Because he didn't even give her the speech. When he meets Daria, he's just like, do you want to dance? And she's like, sure. Yeah, yeah. Hey, she's, you dance? she's about it. Yeah. Um, you know, dance is a crazy first line to me. That's a crazy opener. Just out of just walking up to what a did he say? A Tommy says like, "How are you doing, my dear? Would you like to dance?" It, that's something like that. Wild o- open line to me. But it might work randomly like it did for him. He ended up with an X-rated lady, an X-rated star, which is fine. <laughs> but you know, it's also it was very interesting that the there was a pro sex work message. In the movie, I mean, it wasn't weird, but it was like because uh, he was like, "Man, she's in X-rated films," and then they're like, "So basically, well, yeah." Willie was just well. First of all, Willie was like, "Yeah, I did, like, oh, I would, I would, I, I would could imagine that. myself doing that too." Like, she's making you can make a lot of money doing that. Like, there, there was no I heard putting that was sexist to say though. It beats cleaning toilets. I heard saying that you. Well, I w- used to make a joke when I was younger. I would be like, if I was attractive enough, I'd be a cam girl. I used to uh-huh. say that. I would be a cam girl if I was a girl. And I, they make bread. They make hella bread. Uh-huh. And, and <laughs> yeah. there you go. That's where people are like, well, there's the whole... There's a, it's, not a, it's not actually a positive thing to it's, say. It's not a positive take. Well, there's no, it's, it's not like... You assume it's easy. <laughs> oh, I didn't it's, say it was it's easy. It's just I like... Mean, no, you're saying they make bread. It's like being a Twitch streamer, but it's just showing your body instead of your game. Yeah, and there's also a whole movement yeah, for like uh, <laughs> leftist anti-sex work people that are like... I just read a story about a guy who spent $275,000 on a camera girl. Yeah. In like a, two months. Yeah. I'll this happen. this is gonna lead into a whole other discussion that we should have new episode on, okay, on a okay. different episode. Okay. Yeah, because okay. like, I just want to say like it was it was it was and even Vinny wasn't even like I mean he was kind of putting he was more or less I don't know I'm not trying to defend what he said when he's confronting Johnny about it because he's, he's like always wrong. that's the girl that I was crazy about and just like the girl in the X-rated videos. At least you could charge a dollar instead of a quarter. Or something. And and I think he's not. I mean, he's using that girl to jab to, at his friend. To jab at his friend. So she was, she. she but was he's taking a, the punch. Yeah. But he was. I don't know. I mean, shooting that's through her to get. But yeah, yeah, he, pretty much. Well, I mean, he, essentially, he's like like telling Johnny like in in a in a scumbag way, telling him what fucking Willie was telling him earlier, like like. You're making a bigger, you're projecting, you're making a bigger deal out of this. That and also he was kind of saying, oh, there's more fish in the sea. Yeah. In an asshole way. There was also a part of it that I wanted to speak on, because earlier you were commenting on how, it's like how he's just like having a hustle towards dating a bad thing. It's, 
this is just a comment, like, because it's prevalent in the movie, and I think it's intentionally prevalent in the movie, is that um, even though the writer the takes the time to, like, actually give certain details to a lot of the women characters, from the perspective that they write for the male characters, none of that matters. They're all, like, concepts to them. They don't see them as people. Like, it, it, at the very beginning, when... when uh, the obvious one is like Johnny with his crush on the on the adult actress, mm -hmm. but it's also like they don't care that she's also even if she was like going to her grandma's or something or going to hang out with her her girlfriends, she's very obviously like at home doing stuff and they're bugging her for a bet, and then when they have to do it again, they without like hesitation they, mm -hmm. you know, knock again because in that moment she doesn't matter the bet matters, or it's like later on, uh, Luna. With Luna, yeah, it's like the, these, uh, even though these women are people, and the writer makes a point to accept, like Luna, at the line she says in is like shows that she's had her all, whole other version of the night, but from that guy's perspective, all he remembers is that, you know, he got rejected and then he moves on. It's a thing of like that he doesn't care about them as people, he just is Wait, like. Wait, which character was Luna? Luna, Luna was, was a short haired girl that. The pool player. The pool player. Yeah. yeah. So the friends were Luna and Lala. Yeah, yeah. very college I women names. I hate names. the naming of his characters in this movie. Very New York. He well, was like, uh, Luna, like Lala, uh, Tommy, Johnny. Luna, Lala, sh 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 Baba. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lala's an interesting because I, I think that's actually wow. a, a a common nickname for people with the name like Delilah or something. I th I, I think that's true. It's but a very to be called Luna and Lala is Lala a choice. Lala is a, a common hood name too. That's true. Not but yeah, I. I don't know. I think, I think it's an interesting movie because of all of the stuff that we're talking about. Like, yeah, there's a lot of campiness to it. Yeah. There's a lot of overacting. The writing is a little bit heavy handed at times, but I do think if you talk about the fucking car crash one more time, right? <laughs> well, now I'm getting it back. Jesus in. Christ. Whoa. <laughs> it was so oh, yeah, yeah, it's super but scary. I mean, I can't think of movies I can't think of any movies that deal with male friendships in the way that this movie has, um, particularly with, you know, men of color. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, we got to write one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, you know, I I can't think of another movie that 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 has these discussions, and that's kind of what what one of the things that I liked about it being like, and having this very like stage feel of like being a play because it gives them the room to have these conversations and to say things explicitly instead of like hinting around what the message of the movie is. Um, yeah. They do not hint around anything. Yeah. They blatantly are like, message? Yeah, yeah. But also it's like this, it's th this guy's first major movie. Like it's the second feature first, ma first studio movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's 1991. You know, well, Garden State was also very heavy handed. <laughs> it's a great film. But to touch on, actually, that kind of goes into, okay, before, I guess, I don't know, it's, this is a hard movie to talk about because the plot is kind of like. All over the place. All over the place. But because you're dealing with force. Life's all over the place, bro. Yeah. Um, what would you, I don't know, I guess, would you recommend this movie to anybody? No. Seriously? No? Like, be like, you, you're you going to learn something from this? No. I'd recommend it to my friends for a jest. Like, this is a movie that we would, like, watch drunk and make fun of the acting and it, make fun of the over, like, heavy-handed yeah. story. I would do all of that, but it was also, I would actually do all of that, too. But, like, now that we talk about, like, the things that come up more and more, and it would be like, hey, we're kind of, like, I had friends that were kind of going through stuff like this or have mm -hmm. gone through stuff like this. Like, yeah, I would kind of sell it. Like, it's a little campy. It's a little, but there's things I think you're going to connect with. Yeah, I think I have a little more nostalgia attached to this because I saw it when I was in high school. Yeah, yeah. But I probably, I feel like I would recommend this to, like, young people. Like, people in their 18, teens, late, early 20s. Like, I feel like, this is that's an appropriate age to like watch this and get something out of it. I'm older now that's true. and I don't take most things serious. But when I was eighteen, I Everything. really didn't take anything serious. Oh really? Not at all. 
Wow, I thought that everyone. I, I, I might have hated this movie when I was Everyone 18. thought you were going to be like, I used to be really sensitive. He's like, no, I was worse. Yeah, <laughs> it's, true. it's true. When I was young, you I think was I was always like this? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I would say that, no. it, like Josh said, like if we were going to get high or drunk and just like make fun of the movie, I'd probably be down. But like if you're in a movie, like movie night group, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I and someone watch. recommends this movie, that guy's off the list for, for a minute. For sure, for sure. I'd rather watch Million Dollar Baby. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking my heart right now, dude. Hey, break your heart. John Leguizamo's acting is the best acting in the movie, and it's bad. I thought Mario Luke, Mario Joyner did a pretty I good job. I thought that cop did really. <laughs> really, I thought he was I'm the worst. Movie. I'm really, a yeah, I thought he acted again. I, think I thought I, it was funny that as an actor playing an actor, he was making a lot of actor acting. choices. <laughs> Yeah, I guess yeah, yeah. yeah, he did. And I thought that was probably But like I said, I think I think part of that too is that I see this as a play. I mean, and it literally it, opens as a play. Yeah. They're like, "Thank you for joining something in such theater." Oh yeah, the, I mean the opening scene too. They're they're turning they're 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 uh challenging the perspectives as mm -hmm. of of young black and brown men in the in the city. Making people think that they're going to fight. Anyway, um I don't know. I like the movie. I didn't think it was bad, but uh, but I wouldn't go around saying it's good. Here's the thing. I'm much more forgiving of the production and the acting because I'll go back and watch movies. You, we talked about Million Dollar Baby, and that's kind of something that I wanted to touch on about in the middle of it. As soon as the movie started, Ricky was like, see, this is what I'm talking about, obtainable, because this movie's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, again, but but I, the thing like is, is like... I like to reiterate that it's from 91, because movies sucked then. The movie language was different. Isn't that when Lion King But even out? movies now. Like, yeah, but, but the that, thing... If you're trying to make it seem like that's I, a, what, I'm to, just saying... To both of these, well, to talk about these things is like... There's a lot of movies that I think are respected that don't... Not to say that we're we're scrutinizing this movie because, you know, it's 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 black people and brown people. Like, we're not giving them a heart... Like, putting them under a microscope. We're not judging it harder than we would a white movie. Yeah. But I do think that in general, which is an easy thing to say, f please forgive me, but in general, like, white movies get way less critic like fucking well we'll talk about that in a second but uh what's the movie don't look up that movie fucking it. sucked yeah dude. that movie was annoying i heard it a was, lot of good things about it yeah <laughs> from my black friends it's such a bad movie that movie but, it, the like, act the acting is over the top sorry. it's just like it feels like one of those movies like that. that's too aware of no. itself you just said you did no no you no you like no. when movies are campy and like movie -y. Mm, not this one. Not when they're white. It, this no, movie <laughs> racist dog. <laughs> it's crazy. It wasn't even campy. It was just very sarcastic, and it's like one of those movies where the it feels like the writer's calling everyone an idiot. Yeah, I like that. I mean, I get it. I call but everyone an idiot. One movie we can agree on. W movie that we were talking about earlier that won a bunch of awards and is like highly gross. regarded. This Million Dollar Baby. That movie fucking sucks. That movie was terrible. It was awful. <laughs> it's like. The acting is the acting is atrocious. Like if you guys you guys are talking about this movie, like having bad acting. This movie has worse acting than Million Dollar Baby. Hundred. No, no, there's no way. What? This Dog. movie from 1991. This five hundred thousand dollar. This movie does not have worse acting than Million Dollar Baby. No one's put no one puts Baby in the Oscars. <laughs> Just just put a clip of Jay Bershaw needs a refund in Million Dollar Baby right now. Frank could say, show me a fighter who's nothing but a heart, and I'll show you a man waiting for a beating. I think I only ever met one fighter who was all heart. My name's Dangerous Dealer, fighting Flippo Bam Bam Bark, out of Broward County, Texas. In Terrible. general, the acting in the movie is atrocious. Non-disabled actors acting disabled are they're all bad at it. They're all always going to be worse at it. And everyone who defends them, you only think that because you're also not disabled. Fuck you and them. <laughs> <laughs> Million Dollar Baby uh, feels like one of those movies. What's that YouTube guy that does all of those like sketches? Sketches that are like 
oh, you, it's like somebody mistreating a service worker. And then it turns out that that service worker becomes like... Oh, Darman? Darman. There's that's a how million lot dollar of different companies that do... But know. that's the guy that does... Like, that's the guy. I don't really watch toxic stuff like that. Whatever, dude. <laughs> it's about <laughs> resolution. It is. Continuing the conversation of obtainability. I think you're right. I think it's also just like, I don't... I don't know, man. I feel like things get scrutinized to a degree of like I don't I don't think there's many movies that 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 are perfect or are like that are perfect that also stand the test of time in terms of like uh, quality not all not, there's a very few very few very very few most of them are animated but Lion King came out in 94 <laughs> I think that movies as 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 uh uh time goes on, I think tastes change and And that's another thing too, yeah, tastes. Yeah. Have a lot to do with that. I think tastes change, styles change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um like you were talking about the film language changes. Yep, yep, yep. You know, like Dumb and Dumber doesn't have great acting, but it also it's like an over the top comedy. Doesn't have great acting. Listen. That Listen. toilet scene alone, I'm scared. <laughs> Cutting our <laughs> birds' heads off? Our birds' heads are falling off? I don't, I don't know. I love the Farley Brothers. It's the best movie That's in the world. one movie. I forgot where I was going with this, but... It's crazy to say there's bad acting in a movie like that. <laughs> yeah, to compare this movie. <laughs> like, to, uh, I didn't care for the acting in Something About Mary. <laughs> <laughs> the zipper um, ball scene is so unrealistic. Thank you, Baines. Tastes and criticism... Like can be a little bit ha harsh, more than it needs to be. I think people can just take a step back and allow something. Cause like for me, like I said, yeah, there's. I'm gonna be the first to say, yeah, there's heavy-handed writing in Hanging with the Homeboys. But to me, I'm like, I kind of, not at least, but like at least they're having this conversation. It touched. 100%. It actually touched on things. You know, it's touching on things. Uh, and it's the, the parts that are over the top do kind of take you out of it. But in general, as a whole, it's like, there's, there's a lot of relatability in the friend dynamic, how they interact with each other, how they behave like as a friend group getting into mischief. And, uh, yeah, I think it was a good movie. I would recommend it. I mean, I'm fine if anybody makes fun of me and says that this movie is campy and bad acting and stuff and makes fun of it. But I do think, it, for me, I think what I take out of it is that it was just like a refreshing portrayal of like male friendship and uh, uh, masculinity. What would you rate it nine out of, uh, out of ten? <laughs> nine out of ten? What would you rate, I would it, rate it, it a nine? One to ten. <laughs> I would say like an eight. 7.5 to 8 Like What would you see Josh? It was a fun movie I would probably give it A lower score than that Like probably like a 4 For me on a movie scale But it's also pretty preachy Like it doesn't It doesn't It's it's touching on things But it's not just touching on them It's giving it's you petty. an answer <laughs> Yeah It's giving you a straight up Like that final scene to me Was like a huge thing of him being like You can't let these things bother you or keep you from being successful even if you end up not being successful you still have to it, to me it had a very pick yourself up by the bootstraps message um the very pick yourself I don't know up that by it the gives you alley an, and dust yourself up yeah. <laughs> I don't know that it gives you an answer I think it's just like one of those like you know what they cause they that do male French boy friendships like kid movies mm -hmm. they do boy friendships all the time stand by and, me yeah like stand by me and things like they just tell you where they go or where they're choosing to still pursue that path or change their right. path or not each character kind of johnny's choice was to like not be afraid anymore Go right school. but they all made their choices i don't think that's it they made it up for us i think literally those are those characters choices it's also i don't think that you're supposed to agree with any of them by the end right. like i don't think necessarily that's the point i thought top I don't know. Maybe I just identify. I just see eye to eye with Tommy in the, his final speech. And that's what it feels like. I was like, this guy's right. 
to me. He was like, this guy's right. That dude, Willie, turned around and he looked at two other guys who were in there struggling in that restaurant. Yeah. And, and like they had just pointed out, he was like, this is your future if you keep on not taking action of your own life. You're going to end up like these people. The homeless guy. With yeah. The, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They literally say it. So that's why I was saying uh, that it has that kind of a message to me because they're literally message. saying like, if you keep on blaming the white man for your problems. Well, that's the thing, though, is that what he's doing is like. Not take he is because I, I I don't think like uh the movie is like hey racism doesn't exist. I didn't say that. No, I know. I didn't say that. No, you no, didn't. No, say no that. you didn't. And the movie's not saying that either. Yeah. Yeah, obviously the white cop is super racist. <laughs> it's the criminal, <laughs> the actual criminals. <laughs> God you guys. I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, it's okay. So you gave it an eight, and you gave it a four. four. What do you say, Ray? Six. I'll six. give it a seven. I say a six. I brought you down one. I think I have to like again. I have I have a lot more nostalgia, and I'm having three people tell me that this was a bad movie. Well, that doesn't <laughs> change your taste. It's like when you find out that spaghetti noodles with ketchup isn't good. <laughs> <laughs> it's also just something I think like like we talk about taste is like yeah I kind of like these movies like this is something this is something that I could show I don't have any young cousins or nephews or anything I should say I, I don't think it's that a good movie but I do like it I could say it's, it's no not, yeah no uh, I, I get what listen, you're saying my favorite movie is Mystery Men that's a terrible movie that's a good movie <laughs> it's a perfect movie <laughs> that's a movie Mystery I'll die for man. yeah you know what and I watched it recently the only thing I it would holds say up. is it's like a few okay. more Mexicans <laughs> but otherwise I never watched it I <laughs> thought it was too silly what's the song All Star Waffle Man yeah. <laughs> anyway yeah 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 that song I think I think I think a lot of the things that I like about the movie too are not just the movie itself. Yeah. So that's why I give it a little bit of an easier score because it was made by brown people. You know, I th I think a lot of the people in the crew were also people of color, which you don't see a lot with stuff like this. Is like whenever they would make a. Uh, uh, movies that that are are like a lot of movies that are like black cinema or or f made for people of color like the crew is all still all white you know and i think so a movie like this with uh all the cast is people of color um the director is a person of color a lot of the crew are people of color you know and the fact that a company like new line cinema was somebody was pushing for this movie to get made even though it did, had like a scant budget mm -hmm. uh it's you know it's a big deal i think i think that it would have been interesting to see you know what joseph vasquez might have accomplished if he didn't die um i mean there's also an argument to be like he was an abusive person so he probably shouldn't have like continued to Live, <laughs> not live, but Whoa. work. Whoa. Work in the How in the industry. No, 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 no. That he shouldn't have like work. Continue to work in the industry where he could abuse people. Um, no, but I see that he could have faced a lot more and done a lot more. Is what you're saying, right? Yeah, potentially. You know, and it this did help people like John Leguizamo. Um, and I think a lot of the subject matter is something that we don't see in a lot, not in movies in general, but also just like when it comes to like black and brown people, black and brown men, we don't see a lot of these topics handled. Mm -hmm. um, it's true. So I think I am a little bit easier on it and I kind of like the messaging and I like the, the stuff of around the movie more than I probably like the actual movie. <laughs> I, like I said, I didn't hate it. I, yeah. I just didn't think it was like, if we're talking about movies being good, I'm not going to be like, this what would is a you, good movie writing. What would you uh, recommend instead? I don't, I, don't, anyway. I don't even know anything in the same vein. Stand by me. I'm still stuck on No White Country movie. for Old Men for some reason. I literally just watched that. Yeah, literally yeah, three years ago. I no never Country seen for Old Men is a bad movie. <gasps> Damn.
Jessica hates. It white is people. rewatch it. What the it fuck? is. It's a dumb movie. You hate you, white people. Josh you, Brolin. You take is out an the idiot. death. You take out the death allegory, and it's just like the dumb. Like he's literally. Well, you that's change, why I like it. Yeah. You change the music slightly, and it's a comedy about some dude that just found some bag full of money and is on the run from a serial killer. That sounds like a comedy from <laughs> the early nineties. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a bad movie. Instead of Josh Brolin, it's it's it's. You, Chris Rock and that's a kind I of like thing. the death allegory but well this is coming from someone that was afraid to do anything and death is coming to make the choice for you so mm-hmm. it just hits me because I was a coward for so long John like, like the coin toss much like John Leguizamo was afraid of going to college that coin toss was I was afraid to make the coin toss that my own mm-hmm. I was afraid to toss my own coin uh, I, I do want to talk about No Country for Old Men with you Exactly. And you think it's a bad movie, dude? What? We, we watched about it. Bad movies. We watched, we watched it, it in its entirety. Recently, and it's I watched it three days, four days ago. In its entirety. We could watch it Doesn't again. It. But anyway. Um, you guys, you think I think it's too? a movie worth checking out. And if you think it's a bad movie, you but know. I'll, I'll think of other ones, too. Let, it, let us know. Because if this is something that people like, I'm down to do this, too. Oh yeah, yeah. I like this. It's not currently in the comments. on any particular streaming service, but it is available for purchase for like three bucks R- on YouTube. You can rent it. What is the movie we're talking about? Dance. Oh, okay. Hanging with the homeboys. You so can let, rent it for three dollars. Yeah, check it out. Let us know in the comments what you think about it. But this was fun. Uh, for you guys, maybe. You guys were shitting on me the whole time. <laughs> well, that's just the way. Well, it was a bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, you put us through it. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I also like that. Us I, watch I, it. Anyway, we're gonna keep. We're gonna. We're gonna keep talking about this, but from us at uh, Un Poquito. Don't, Don't watch that. Movie. <laughs> Fuck you. <dude. laughs> no, I think. I think